I'd like to welcome you guys back to the Green Hole Garage. Today we're going to fix some issues with my Yamaha GP1800R. We've been having a lot of pump issues where it's cavitating and the problem only continues to get worse. And this cavitation is not something that's uncommon for Yamahas or any other high performance watercraft. So we're going to address how to improve upon this cavitation and how to improve the pump efficiency across the board. So if you come over here and take a look at this, this is a factory Yamaha pump. It's got an eight vein stator, meaning there's eight veins right here. This is the stator. Here's your wear ring. Here is your jet pump impeller. And on the back of this, that's where this factory Yamaha jet pump cone would go. One of the biggest issues, even straight from the factory on a stock Yamaha, is this very small pump cone. Uh, you're not maximizing your pump efficiency with this. So the first thing that we're going to do to improve upon this is replace the factory cone with our Lucky 13 adjustable pump cone. Now you can see that these two cones are way different in size here and I'm going to show you in just a minute exactly how this one works compared to this. And aside from that, um, one of the big issues that we've been having or anyone would have is impeller to wear ring clearance. So over time, the impeller wears out and the wear ring wears out, opening up that impeller to wear ring clearance. And that is this little gap here between the wear ring and the impeller edge. What happens is as you put runtime and hours on this, when it cavitates, when you suck up sand or dirty water, it causes wear to the wear ring and it shrinks down the impeller. It wears out the edge of the impeller there. And when that gap opens up, you're losing thrust and increasing the risk of cavitation. Now over time, that problem only gets worse. The more you cavitate, the more damage you're doing to your pump. As you can see, this is the wear ring that I just pulled out of it. And we've got some cavitation burn here. And I'm going to explain that to y'all. You can see it's worn out on the inside here. And I feel the best way for me to explain to y'all how all this works is to pull out my whiteboard and really draw a picture. I feel like the best way I can explain this to y'all is on this whiteboard. I kind of drew out a representation. Now I'm no artist, but this will be adequate enough to teach you guys. So what you're looking at here in this image is if we took a section view of this watercraft straight down the center and sliced it, this is what you would see with the pump set up. This right here is the front view of the impeller within the wear ring. So here we've got our Venturi nozzle, our pump cone. Here's your pump and stator impeller with the wear ring there, your pump tunnel intake grade, and this would be somewhat of what the ride plate is doing. First thing that we're going to address is cavitation, what it is and why it's bad. From a hole shot, which is when you take off from idle, is primarily when you're going to cavitate. When this drive shaft and impeller rapidly increases RPM, on this particular ski, it goes over 9,000 RPM on hold shot. It's sucking all of the water out of the pump tunnel, spinning it out of the pump and Venturi nozzle, with no water left in this pump tunnel to pressurize. What's happening is it's creating a low pressure zone in the pump tunnel. Pressure actually drops so low that it reaches the vaporization point of water. So when you do that, you have these micro bubbles that develop on the edges of the impeller all around here because the water is actually vaporizing and these micro bubbles implode when pressure is reintroduced. And that implosion creates extreme heat that will erode away at your impeller, it will erode away at your wear ring, and will also damage your pump in severe cases. I've seen cases so bad where it's actually eroded and chipped away at the veins inside of the pump. So no, not only is cavitation bad for hole shot and acceleration, but you're actually damaging all of these components. And over time, the more you cavitate, the more it's going to erode away. The bigger this impeller to wear ring clearance is going to get, which ultimately will make it cavitate even worse and do even more damage. So this is certainly something that you want to address and improve upon, not only for your whole shot and acceleration performance, but for your pump longevity as well. The first thing that we typically do 
it switched to a Solus impeller. If you buy a stage kit, it comes with a Solus impeller. It improves cavitation, acceleration, and top speed, but it does not fix this issue. And the next step for that would be installing a Lucky 13 pump cone. So this pump cone is physically bigger than the stock pump cone that comes on Yamaha, Kawasaki, CU, whatever. This is going to be bigger. Now why would this pump cone reduce cavitation and perform better than the small one? A lot of people just throw this in there, they say it doesn't work, doesn't take the time to fine tune it, and they're disappointed with the results. But the reality is, if you take the time to fine tune this cone along with your entire pump setup, you're going to reduce cavitation, increase acceleration, and increase top speed. And the reason this works is because you're actually reducing the volume in the Venturi nozzle. And because water cannot be compressed, the only option for the water flowing through here is to accelerate and shoot out the back of this Venturi. So you're increasing thrust by reducing the volume here in this nozzle. Now in a perfect world, the impeller and drive shaft and engine RPM will all be the same when you install this cone and create more thrust out the back. But unfortunately, by doing this, you're putting more load on the impeller and the engine, so you will initially drop RPM. Now there are two ways to go about this. You can either A, play with your Venturi nozzle diameter sizes and impeller pitch, or B, add performance parts to your engine to increase horsepower. And by doing so, if you achieve the same RPM that you did before installing this pump cone, you're going to create lots more thrust, which equates to more speed, more acceleration, and you will improve the whole shot. This is gonna be your best bang for the buck. 100% of skis will benefit from that. The next thing that you can do to help with cavitation as play with different intake grade. The intake grade that you put on your ski is going to depend on what you want to do with it. Do you want to be on flat water and have the best top speed? Do you not care about top speed and want whole shot and low end acceleration? Are you going to be in rough water and want to stay planted in as rough seas as you can and go as fast as you can? All of those things are going to change the intake grade. But what those grades have in common is they're all going to be a top loader design. Some of these will be more aggressive, have a, a steeper angle, or shoot out further to grab more water. The opening in the back may be larger, allowing more water flow. With all of these intake grade designs, the more water that you're able to flow in here, the more aggressive top loader style grades, you're going to improve on rough water hookup and hole shot but if you get too aggressive, you're creating more drag and you're going to lose top speed. And on some skis, depending on what you have, the intake rate, depending on how aggressive you go, and even the ride plate design, if you change angles, it changes how water flows into the pump tunnel. Depending on the ski model, you could start getting pump stuffing. And what happens is at speed, you're flowing too much water into the pump tunnel then the pump can actually process and it spits it back out the front and lifts the back of the ski and that's what we call pump stuffing. Some skis is very bad, some skis it doesn't happen at all. So you've got to be mindful depending on the ski that you have, what you're doing with your intake rate and your ride plate angle to avoid this. Now there are things you can do to eliminate pump stuffing. That's a totally different topic that we can get into later. Right now we're primarily focused on cavitation and improving pump efficiency. But if you guys want to know more about pump stuffing, how it happens and how to fix it, leave a comment we can go through that. Aside from all of that, if you have a highly modified ski that makes a lot of horsepower and you want the absolute best hole shot possible, you can play with different pump housings, with different hub diameters and different vein designs and a different amount of veins in the stator. And you can also play with dual impellers. And a dual impeller is exactly what it sounds like. It's a second impeller that's been welded to the nose of the single impeller, which will allow you to have an incredible hole shot, but you need the horsepower to be able to turn that. Probably 95% of the skis out there will not benefit from a dual impeller because they physically do not have the horsepower for that. The moral of the story is you need to optimize your pump setup for A, your horsepower level, and B, your intended purpose with your watercraft. 
and from there, if all you can do is improve cavitation and not eliminate it, then you need to learn some throttle control to get the best acceleration and whole shot possible. Because if you're cavitating, not only are you doing damage to your pump setup, but you're also not accelerating as hard as you can. So take the time, optimize your pump, find tweak things to where you can get the best whole shot possible, and then learn some throttle control to where you ride that edge of cavitation and eliminate the risk of damage to your pump and accelerate harder. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you enjoyed it so we can do some more videos like this. I appreciate you all for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next video.